Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to the show. Thank you for joining us. The Atheist Experience is live November 16th, 2003. I'm your host, Martin Wagner. Ashley Perrion. My co-host, as always. Uh, we welcome you. Uh, Atheist Experience is sponsored by the Atheist Community of Austin, a nonprofit educational organization promoting positive atheism and the separation of church and state. ACA has weekly meetings every Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. at Hot Jumbo Bagels, located downtown at 307 West 5th Street between Guadalupe and Lubbock, except for the first Sunday of each month, when we have our lecture series in the Mayor's Room at the Austin History Center, 9th and Guadalupe, at noon. Or 12.30, I think, is... Yeah, yeah it, it actually opens at 12, but they kind of like just barely open the doors at 12, and so yeah, really things usually roll at 12.30. Building opens at noon, and then we start a little after that. Um, so for more information about that, you can visit our uh, website at atheist-community.org and check the uh, meetings page. Uh, our next lecturer, uh, coming up uh, the first Sunday of December, will be Dr. Robert Solomon, UT professor, and we still don't know his topic. It's going to be a big mystery yeah. and a surprise, and so I'm sure, but I'm sure we'll be will be brilliant, and uh, no word yet on who we may have lined up for January or February, but um, like I said, it will appear on the um, upcoming events page on our website uh, when we uh, get that information, and we'll tell you here on the show. Okay. Uh, other stuff that we do, um, various social activities uh, for ACA include Godless Gamers every Monday night at 7 o'clock p.m. at the home of Russell and Virginia Glasser, and ACA Happy Hour is Thursday evenings at Antonio's Tex-Mex near the intersection of Highway 183 and I-35. Starts 7.30ish, but people trickle in all evening long. And that's a lot of fun uh, evening get-together uh, for folks. Uh, the Nonprofits is our bi-weekly internet audio show. Plays at the AtheistNetwork.com website uh, every other Saturday from 2 to 3.30 p.m. Uh, hosted by Jeff D. Russell Glasser. Uh, Jeff Jones appears uh, sometimes. Um, next, this coming Saturday will be the next episode. And if you visit our website and, and click on the radio show page, you'll be able to listen to about the last um, six or eight episodes uh, of, of the program. There is an interactive chat room feature that uh, on the uh, atheistnetwork.com website that runs concurrently with the show, so you can interact with the guys. And um, also, uh, what else was I going to... Oh, right. I was going to mention that if you have a hard time uh, linking to the MP3, live MP3 stream from the atheistnetwork.com website. You can go to our website, radio show page on our site. Russell has thoughtfully provided a link directly to the, to the live feed from there, so that should not be a problem. But that's a live MP3 stream, lots of fun. Every other Saturday, the nonprofit's hosted by Jeff D. Coming up this coming Saturday, the next episode. University Atheists and Agnostics, last but not least, uh, our pals at the UT. Um, uh, first uh, successful, really successful UT Atheist and Agnostics uh, student uh, organization, registered uh, student group, wrapping up their third semester uh, uh, coming up. And for more information about them, uh, there's the info on your screen, studentorgs.utexas.edu slash UAA is their website. They meet every Friday afternoon in uh, room Garrison 200, 4 o'clock p.m. So uh, if you are a student uh, or faculty member at UT and you're interested about the group, uh, well, please give them a call. And uh, so, um, way for students at UT, unbelievers to meet one another. I think that it pretty much takes care of it for announcements. So, uh, right. thanks again for joining us. Uh, for more information about our site, visit atheist-community.org, and you'll find it all there. So, uh, let me see. Without further ado, it's time for the news. What's happening in the world? Okay. I had quite a bit of news this week. A yeah. lot of stuff going on. Busy news. Good news this yeah. week. Yes, yes. Uh, mostly. <laughs> um, <laughs> as always, it's uh, not that easy. Um, okay, first one, though. Scientists have uh, created a virus now that reproduces. They have actually created, uh, put together the genomes and created life, essentially. Uh -huh. uh, an important technical, technical bridge towards the creation of life was crossed Thursday when genomics uh, pioneer Craig Venter announced that his research group created an artificial virus based on a real one in just two weeks' time. Uh -huh. uh, when researchers wow. created a synthetic genome, the genetic map of the virus, and implanted it into, into a cell, the virus became biologically active, meaning it, meaning it went to work reproducing itself. Oh. Uh, Vendor cautioned that the creation of artificial human or animal life is a long way off because oh, yeah. it's a synthetic bacteriophage. Uh, the virus that was created is a much simpler life form. Right. Um, basically, he was saying that uh, the, synthet the synthetic bacteriophage that was created uh, has 5,000 base, base pairs in its genome. The human genome has 3 billion. Oh. So a little ways off yeah, from that. Yeah, quite one. a bit. But yeah. getting there. Um, 
Obviously, they have ethical questions about this that people are raising, and of course, the first one they always list is, should we be playing God? <laughs> um, well, somebody has to. <laughs> <laughs> he's not doing the job. Yeah. Um, but um, basically, uh, Arthur Kaplan, who heads the University of Pennsylvania's Center for Bioethics, uh, said this technology is impressive. It's powerful, and it should be treated with humility and caution, but we should do it. Yeah, just well, simply suppressing technology just because it could be potentially dangerous is not sure. going to do well, anything. You know, uh, one of the, uh, many obvious applications right away that you have for this sort of thing is that um, you know this whole new spate of genetic medicines yes. that are being developed, um, like to target cancers and things like that. Yeah, uh, the delivery technique for introducing these kinds of medications into the body would be through artificial viruses. What you do is you would um, engineer a benign virus yeah uh you know with essentially you know the genetic information yeah. needed to fight that affliction within it exactly you know send it into the body and then uh, you know it all just you know the nature is is able to take its course at that point yeah um and so it, it's and, and you can really target things yeah very specifically so uh it has uh it has some very profound um potential uh, uh effects yeah. beneficial effects now another an, an, an obvious worry would be you know uh bioterror of course, that yeah. sort of thing. But yeah. again, you know, uh, it, it's it's not like but you're again, about to if, be marketing you, your home design your own virus kits. Yeah, so. if, if you simply suppress this, I mean, yeah. people are still going to develop it. It just won't be with any kind of sponsorship. It won't be under any kind of control or oversight. Exactly. And so, and so then, once they do create, once you know the bad guys do create mm -hmm. something, then everybody else won't have anything to do about it. Yeah, they won't yeah. be. Any it's way good to that this it. kind of technology so. is perfected first by you know the real, the legitimate exactly. scientific community. Exactly. Because you know then we we have the knowledge of, uh, of what it all entails. Yeah. Um, you know, and and how potentially to undo any damage. Yeah. Whereas, as you pointed out, if, if something like this suddenly emerged out of nowhere from the you know some some Bin Laden funded yeah you know a lab and, exactly. and then good grief we'd be hit with something that we just had no defense against and yeah. it could be a cataclysmic. Yeah. So yeah. um. So that's great. I Potentials for something like this are just, again, as he was saying, incredible. I mean, yeah, just simple things like uh, diabetes. Mm -hmm. You know, one injection of a virus yes. that you know produces insulin, and there you go. Yeah, yeah, and that's it's it. infinitely more effective so. than you know having to take yeah. shots yeah. all the time, so. or you know, be constantly you know watching your diet. Which exactly. Is, and my, you know, my mother has uh, the kind of, she has to like strictly, very strictly. Okay. Uh, you know, just re regulate her diet and. Uh, okay. Boy, it's just a nightmare. I mean, yeah. I just can't imagine. Uh, yeah. It would be very difficult to uh, to control <laughs> basic yeah. cravings. Yeah. But, you know, when you eat the wrong thing and, and you can run the risk of dropping dead, <laughs> that's incentive. But still, yeah. boy, yeah. you know. So. Uh, and uh, actually, with this technology, they're going to be putting it in the public domain also for scientists. Uh, oh. the, whole pro the whole process by which they have done it and everything that they used... Um, it's just going to be public domain for scientists. It'll appear in the next few weeks on a website for the proceedings of the National Academy of Science. Oh, so that means that any uh, so, terrorist could potentially so launch So basically, it. anybody can get a hold of this and, yeah. and work with it. Yeah. But again, terrorists yeah. can do it, but so can everybody else. Well, yeah, and that's another thing so. is that uh, what, what, this, uh, what this does is it effectively forestalls any sort of creepy kind of uh, you know, corporate espionage. Exactly. Uh, where, uh, you know, bad guys get a hold of something and then nobody but the damn uh, patent holder yeah. has the information. And then, uh, you know, and, and yeah, it, development it's just is a way stifled. of, yeah. So, so yeah, it's, it's like um, the whole internet piracy thing, right? You know, yeah. there's been yeah. uh, like uh, the bands who have actually come out supporting things like downloading, you know, hey, yeah, you know, try some of yeah. our songs for free mm -hmm. to see if you like us. And then if not, those, those bands, you know, getting fan bases and doing okay. Really? Because people are, you know, like, uh, you know, whereas, um, you know, the, the recording, the, the, the big record labels who are all resistant yeah. to it and trying yeah. to fight it. It's like, no, look, this is a technology that exists now. I mean, the toothpaste is out of the tube. Yeah. And, um, you know, but instead of trying to work with it, always trying to suppress it and trying to, you know, sue and prosecute people for downloading songs, it just isn't uh, going to be yeah. working. Yeah, it's going to be practically yeah. impossible to stop it from yeah. happening. So learn to work with it. Exactly. Make it legal. Yeah, type of thing. and then uh, you know the, the 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 problems become much less than what you uh, had, had yeah. expected. So yeah, so. Um, wow. Well, that's very exciting news, and we'll see what developments arise from that. This okay. could be, you know, this could uh, really be the kind of the forefront of all sorts yeah. of future, um, you know, life extension technologies. Um, exactly. You know, 
used to all the the most crippling diseases we've ever had could just be a thing of the past. Cancer. Yeah. You know yeah. what have you? So. Awesome. Okay. Cool. Next piece of awesome news. Yeah. I'm so, I just can't shut up. You just sometimes <laughs> just like. Watch. Yes, Martin. Uh, no, I was just going to add. Doesn't this also, uh, you know, the alternative medicines crowd, yes. the new agers, the the supplement yes. people, the folks who are all into, you know, uh, yeah. spirit healing and crap yeah. like that. They always want to attack the scientific community and like and like legitimate medicines and things like yeah. that. It's like, oh well, they suppress us because they're all greedy and they just want the money and they don't want our stuff out there making people well and. And it's yeah. like this, you know, by putting this technology out in the public domain, yeah. that effectively forestalls that kind of stupid yeah. criticism, which isn't true to begin with. Yeah, of course. And you know, it's, um, you know, it, it really is a great way of just, you know, showing that uh, you know most scientists, in fact, science is all about altruistic motives yeah. and wanting to do better things for the human race, and that's what science does. Yeah. You know, but the the people, and the, uh, the and fear it. You know, they're like uh, the the new age crowd and, and some of the religious fundamentalists and what have you. You know, they always try to paint science in this really negative sort of Hollywood mad yeah. scientist light. Right? Yeah. It's just not like that. Yeah. So. No. No. I'm done now. Okay. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next one. No. Um, everyone here has heard about Alabama. Oh. And mm. uh, Judge Roy Moore there put up his washing machine size monument there mm-hmm. and the... People had a complete fit, went to court, said, take it down. He said, no, I want to go to Supreme Court, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Keep getting ordered to take it down. Well, now, because he has been denying federal orders to take the monument down and and saying just, no, I'm not going to do it, he has been removed from office. Goodbye. On Thursday, um, the state court of the judiciary unanimously imposed the harshest penalty possible after a one-day trial in which Moore said his refusal was a moral and lawful acknowledgement of God. Prosecutors said Moore's defiance, left unchecked, would harm the, ju- the judicial system. Mm. Um, presiding Judge William Thompson said the nine-member court had no choice in its decision after Moore willfully and publicly ignored the federal court order. The yeah. chief justice placed himself above the law. That's exactly what he did. You so, know? And all the spinning that the far right is trying to do. Exactly. That, oh, no, this is, you know, some horrible evil plot. To, this is just a man trying to express his beliefs, and it's yeah. it's, it's evil. That, you know. Bull. I mean, no, look. <laughs> Every stretch of the imagination, bull. Yeah. I mean, this this was a flagrant, you know, endorsement. By, oh, this, yeah. is, this is a man. This is who is a demagogue who, yeah. who wanted to use the power of his office okay, to uh, get official endorsement. Yeah. To, you know, of his religious beliefs and and, in, and an imposition of his religious beliefs upon the community. Yeah. And again, okay, he, and he when knew, you he, can't just decide. Oh well, yeah. And yeah. if you break any, if you violate a federal court order, okay, you're going to get smacked down. Yeah. yeah. You know, there. You know, it, this isn't about a culture war. Yeah. You know, this isn't about. Uh, you know, there's this uh, some some horrible plot to stamp out the acknowledgement of God in the public sphere or yeah. what have you. Yeah. You know, this is all about. Uh, you know, the law is what it is. Yeah. You know, and the law says religious demagogues who happen to get elected to office can't use that office to proselytize. Yeah. Period. This is exactly what he was doing. <laughs> so. You know, I wonder if he's going to, there's a lot of speculation that he is going to parlay this um, martyrdom of his. Yeah. Yeah. Into a run for governor. Well, I think it's next week or sometime relatively soon. Uh, I saw an announcement in one article that he is going to make an announcement that will potentially change the course of history in this country. Or well, something, something big and you know. Well, I mean, it's, like you know, that. it's his usual bluster, so, right? But we yeah. see we see how far his bluster has gotten him up to now, right? Yeah. It's gotten his ass kicked out of office. Unfortunately, so, though, if he does run for something, he could have the public support to actually get it. Well, that's so true. So even yeah. even though you know people who look at him and and know what's going on here see him as a complete moron, mm-hmm. um, he could still have enough public support to actually get elected to you know governor or whatever. Yeah. So which, well, we'll see. I think now the the next step are they're they're trying which to then we just have to start smacking them down from there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The um you know there there are just uh, forces in the religious right in this uh, who will not rest until this country is an iron fisted yeah. Christian theocracy. You know, exactly. in, in, until America becomes a Christian Iran, yeah. they just won't stop. Yeah. Right. And and what is most arrogant is how they equate, you know, they equate themselves with the religion. They equate what happens to them with the fate of the belief system. You know, yeah. it's like they have they have sort of cast themselves in this role as being it, it's all it's it's all about us. You yeah. know, whatever happens to us will, will spell the fate of this religion for all time. You know, which is which is pretty big hubris, <laughs> you know, to say the least. Right. Yeah. 
But uh, you know, but that is how Roy Moore has cast himself, right? He has cast himself as this Christian martyr, yeah. right? You know, the the greatest uh, ever in America. Uh, he's and, just um, trying to do what's right, and everybody around is yeah. putting him down for it. Yeah, and 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 he is, and he is, he is essentially, you know, he represents God. He is almost like the, you know, he's he's this analog almost, yeah. you know. And what happens to him? You know, is is just like what they did to Jesus. You know, they yeah. smacked him down and they whipped him and they yeah. crucified him and they oppressed him and yeah. and it's all happening to Roy Moore again. That is, he's casting himself in this role of an of a modern day yeah. Jesus almost. Yeah. And um, you know, it really is profoundly offensive, but uh, it just goes to show uh, how self absorbed you can get when you are a <laughs> big yeah. fat religious fanatic. <laughs> um, I've been in an email exchange with some like uh, Roy Moore supporters, and without exception. They are, they are classic paranoid conspiracy theorists. Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they start trotting out. You know, they just talking about how all the evil liberals want to make America a police state, with, yeah. which is you know, which is weird because that seems like that's kind of what they want. But, <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what they're Yeah, but then and it's all this movement to make religion illegal, and it's just like what you know, you, you've yeah. just been swallowing every wacky every line that they have been feeding you. you. Know, it's like, well, I don't care what god you worship. You can go to your church. And bow down to your invisible friend, you know, on your own time, all you want. That's Could fine. Take Just, that big old hulking monument that was yeah. in, the, in the court, move it into any public house, public mm-hmm. church, on the public front lawn. meaning government, public meaning official. Well, non-official. Or, or it can it can be taken yeah. to any oh, non right. non-governmental building, any mm-hmm. church, any mm-hmm. house, yeah. anybody's front lawn. Right. They can put it right in the middle of their lawn By a with lot. lights shining on, shining on it. Perfectly fine. I wouldn't have the slightest problem right. with that. Buy a lot, turn that lot into a park. Exactly. Put the monument in the middle of the thing, and now exactly. you'll have a park with a monument in it exactly. like you want. No problem. That's fine. No problem. That's legal as all get out. Yeah. But as soon as the government starts doing it, yeah. then the government is saying, well, these people are better than the other ones. Yeah. We support these people's ideas, but we don't support those people's ideas. Uh-huh. And that's where it starts getting into, if you're a member of these people, you're not getting a fair representation. Mm-hmm. So yeah, and yeah. It's like uh, you know the the, um, you know, the 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 theocrats, the Roy Moore supporters, are always like, "Why do you guys have just a problem with other people's beliefs?" Be like, I don't have a problem yeah. with anybody's beliefs. I don't have a problem with you wanting to have an invisible friend. And you know uh, that's that's okay with yeah. me. I think it's dumb. It's okay. I mean, it's your right. I respect that right. Yeah. Okay. But uh, I don't want demagogues getting in government positions, using the power of that government position to impose that belief on me. Yeah. You know, yeah. to shove that down my throat, and or even to or even to create uh, an environment in which what it, guys, what are you doing with the cameras in there? It's all. <laughs> um, are you to create an environment in which it's very clear? Okay, the people who agree with this particular belief system, people yeah. who belong to this religion, are favored, and if you don't belong to that religion, um, then you are not favored. Then you are second class. You know, nice. that's what that's what I have a problem with. Yeah. I don't have, you can believe whatever you want, but don't, you know, put me in a position or anyone who doesn't share your beliefs in a position of saying, you know, being, being told you're second class because you don't share these beliefs. Yeah. 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 And to keep on the theme, uh-huh. um, we know that they have a lawyer in town in Austin uh-huh. who has been working to try and get uh, the monument in our Capitol building taken down. Uh, it's actually on the, the south lawn of the right. Capitol building. Um, no, but No, no, it's north. Oh, it's north side? Yeah. That's right, that's right. North west yeah. side of the thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, he's been working to get that taken down. Uh, he went through court here, uh-huh. and they said, no, it's more of a historical monument than a religious one. And so he went to the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals in New Orleans, and they also ruled that it is more historical than religious. So as of now, it is staying up. Oh. Um, but but uh, um, what is their rationale for saying it's historical? I mean, obviously it's part of the you know the biblical text and the Bible goes back you know a couple thousand yeah. years. But a monument, when you just have a Ten Commandments monument sitting there, the commandments aren't being presented in any context other than you know themselves. It's a self-contained thing. There's yeah. no historical context yeah. that. Um, and I think the way that they're positioning yeah. this, I, re- I read through the ruling last night. Um, is that, yeah, if you have just that one monument standing there, mm-hmm. and that's all it is, then yeah, you could consider that an endorsement of that religion. However, they have like, I, I believe it's like 40 odd monuments on the Capitol grounds. This one of them that's kind of tucked away off to the side. And, and so just like all the others. Are they saying they have other monuments uh, uh, of a religious nature? No. Or just other? Just other monuments, period. Okay. They, and 40 of them? 
I I think it was a fairly large I mean, I know there are like statues on the, the main lawn. Yeah. You know, facing Congress. Yeah. I can't and so they're saying the, that to the I can't remember the exact Islam number, but it, but it was lots and lots of monuments, basically. Did anyone bring up this the was fact? This one of them. Did anyone bring up the fact that the, um, the Fraternal Order of Eagles, who were responsible for putting that monument up in the first place, you know, back in like the 50s? 61, I think. Yeah, yeah. that's right. It was all done as a promotion for the Cecil B. DeMille movie, yeah. The Ten Commandments. Yeah. <laughs> you know, does any, I mean, has that been Heck brought a movie up? movie poster. Yeah, saying that, you know, what sort of, I mean, it seems if, if, that's a, if it's a historical item, yeah, I know. it has to do with, you know, the history of, of, of cinema more than the history of anything to do with our nation. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so um, I believe, uh, the lawyer Van or- Thomas Van Orden is planning on, you know, at least going to the Supreme Court with this and approaching yeah. them. I, well, they probably won't hear it. But. Yeah, I, I've heard that they're not going to hear it. And I've heard other people say that this is the exact kind of case that they are looking at yeah. because it isn't something that's so extreme, like let's say the Alabama case. Yeah. Um, it, it's yeah, I mean, of, there's no, there's no big religious demagogue out exactly, there like exactly. f- this flinging is, himself bodily onto the thing, saying, "Yeah, this is I, this is more of a run of the mill." Yeah. Ten Commandments monument at a, gov- <laughs> at a government property, yeah. rather than Alabama, where it was just so blatantly obvious that they were promoting yeah. religion with it that there was no other way to look at it. Yeah, this one, it's debatable. It's still yeah, so. yeah. But uh, I, I'm still you know but when you consider that the um, okay the the monument by our capital, it's got like uh, eleven commandments for one. Well, <laughs> there is that. <laughs> interestingly. Um, but there's like at the bottom of the monument, there's like the Cairo symbol, yep. which is the Greek symbol for Christ. Yep. And then there are a couple stars of David. Yep. And then at the top of it, there's like the Coptic eye. Yeah, the okay. pyramid with the eye on the $1 mm-hmm. bill. Yeah, and so these are all like uh, brazenly religious. So I think yeah. the you know, Coptic eye, I think, is actually Masonic. Yeah. Some maybe it is. I, yes, I'm, not, no? I'm not puzzled maybe, on it. Some maybe in the, okay, I'm getting a nod. Maybe we'll, to get that clarified, maybe a, a bright color, we'll know. But those are all still openly religious yeah. symbols. So. Yeah. Again, to say that it's not a, there's no, not even the hint of an intent for the yeah. monument to, to be making some sort of a religious statement is, yeah. um, yeah. I mean, not I really am all the that. Lord thy God that shall have no other gods before me. Hmm. Kind of blatant there. Kind of sounds a bit. Not room for question. A little, little <laughs> religious <you know? laughs> Could have problems. But yeah, it's well, well. So, hmm. so anyway, for right now, so the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals said, nope, it's, Perfectly fine where it is. Yeah. So, yeah. Shall see what happens with that. Mm-hmm. And the final story of the day, Voyager 1. It was launched in 1977. It was intended to have a five-year mission to view some of the solar system's inner planets, uh, some of our neighbors, essentially. Um, well, it's now 26 years later, mm. and it's still chugging along and pumping back data to us. You go for you. Um, not all that much as anymore, but it's still yeah. doing it. And so. also now there is a uh, question. It may be outside of uh, what's called the heliosphere. Basically, the area in, in the solar system where the, the sun has a gravitational pull, mm-hmm. and it has effect on things. So it's left the solar system. It has left the solar system. Wow. Voyager has, has left, left the, the building. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, awesome. Um, you go, little Voyager. So but, it's uh, all the way, it's, it's past the Cooper Belt, it's past the Oort Cloud? It's, yep, it's past all of that, apparently. Damn. apparently. That's a so, long way to travel. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's out there by, yeah. what was it again, 8 billion miles away from Earth. Billion so, miles. Billion. Yeah. Um, and like I say, uh, it was meant for a five-year mission. Mm. Which means, you know, sometime in the early 80s, it should have been, you know, kaput. Mm-hmm. But instead, it's still working today. And they said with the battery power that they have, it could potentially go on for another, uh, what is it, 17 years. Holy cow. Into 2020. <laughs> so, <laughs> when so they what? built stuff then, they built it to I, last. I tell you, they really got bang for their buck on the warranty on that. So much for that. So much for that. You know, thirty thousand miles. Yeah, yeah. Well, the uh, (laughs) yeah, (laughs) that's just genuine GM parts. Um, You know what? what, What's uh, what sort of uh, signals are we getting from it now? Apart from, damn, it's cold. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, Um, I I, I don't know. They don't have very much on that. I I can't imagine that they're really getting too much of any real value after it passes outside of that area. Yeah. Because once you get an interstellar space, you basically have perfect vacuum. You have yeah. no solar wind. You have no charged particles from the sun. Mm-hmm. You have nothing of that kind. Yeah. And so, what essentially it's but getting that's the first time we'd be ever, ever, ever able, 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 able to get those kinds of readings firsthand. 
Well, those readings are just... <laughs> well, yeah, but, you know, it's like... <laughs> uh, just uh, Not that exciting stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, well, yeah, it's... Uh, it, yeah, and this is also... See, uh, it, it's probably in a good uh, position, though, now to study things like cosmic background radiation, wouldn't it be? Possibly. Or is it even equipped for that? Maybe it's Possibly. not... A, yeah. I, I would expect that it most likely... Uh, the, <laughs> the things that they have on it... Uh, are going to be kind of low tech, I would expect. Huh. Uh, I'm not positive on that. Well, but 1977 again. technology. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they didn't even have like you know. I think we were still what that was Pac-Man, right? that was <laughs> pre-Pac-Man, <laughs> right? So, uh, <laughs> so, so yeah, I figure if space probe technology, uh, you know, advances like video game technology, yeah, you know, I know. probably we should have some good stuff going on <laughs> yeah, nowadays. It's like we've flung a big Atari 2600 out. <laughs> 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 yeah, just not yeah. quite, uh, not quite Xbox yet, but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so that's and, great, uh, though. That's yeah. uh, really in fun. Voyager One. This is actually the one where they went out and they had the gold-plated record on it, oh, where right. you can play the record and you've got, you know, hello, hola, you know, not <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah. So and just all the different languages, you know, a little interpretation of them and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It's got some great, you know, some pictures of what people look like and a map of our solar system to show where we are. Yeah, which some people have like said that. that's maybe not a good idea. <laughs> You know, I mean, anybody who has read science fiction with any you know uh, regularity knows that uh, you know you don't mind it like tell the aliens where <laughs> here we are, come invade us. But uh, <laughs> um, that's still, I mean, anyway, the likelihood if it if there's even a remote possibility it could contact be contacted by any yeah. sort of intelligence like that will be long extinct. Yeah, presumably. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, the sun or to will, the point where if they do come and you know stomp on Earth, it's like. <laughs> And we'll have gone Nova and cindered out and, and all the rest of it. So, so. Ah, But that's just great. Science chugs along. Yep. Hooray. So even if it is just well beyond its warranty status. Mm-hmm. Uh, our phone so. number, which is not on screen right now for reasons best known to our control room folks, uh, is 477-2288, am I? Uh, yes. Yeah, yes. okay. To call us live. Um, Thanks. And uh, this and live there's... call-in show. I'm sorry, you were There's saying. There's also the one story, which I didn't bring in. I didn't get a, get a print out of it, but of the Planned Parenthood thing. Oh, right. Yeah, we should talk about that because that is important. Yeah, um, that the, was um, a fairly decent story. Yeah. Uh, there is there is this big kind of stink uh, happening right now with some, uh, some uh, uh, anti-abortionists yeah. uh, are, are really putting the uh, intimidation thumbscrews down on just about every local contractor they can have, they, yeah. they can find, to, to prevent them from... Uh, constructing this new Planned Parenthood uh, facility off of Ben White. Yeah. And they're having a lot of success. I mean, they have s- successfully, I don't know how they've done this, but they have scared the crap out of a lot of companies. Uh, well, basically, just I, th- I think threatening it's, I think, boycotts. I think it's just lots and lots of churches have banded together uh-huh. and basically just had all their members start calling, you know, yeah. you know contractors who are, you know, mm-hmm. semi related to this project saying that, you know, we will never do business with you again if you continue this project. Mm hmm. And so basically, I mean, it, it's a business decision. If they, if they can see that, you know, everyone is leaving them mm-hmm. because they're working on this project, well, they're unfortunately going to dump it. So. Yeah, I mean, it, so, so it's, you know, a successful sort of boycott uh, intimidation yeah. tactic. Um, but again, it just goes to show, though, the, the, the motivation behind it, though, is not to, you know, well, I think the guy who is organizing this whole boycott thing has basically come out and said, God doesn't want this building built. Exactly. Well, seems yeah. to me that if God didn't want the building built, you know, he has why doesn't better he, ways of doing it. Yeah, why doesn't he get his ass down here and say it himself? Yeah. Okay, why doesn't God, I mean, God can just can, can just say so himself. If there's a God and he doesn't want this facility built, he can say so. But basically what this guy is saying is, you know. Don't intend to speak yeah, for God. We know that you don't want this building yeah. built. Are you saying that, you know, you speak for God or that you are God? Yeah. It's the same sort of Roy Moore type arrogance. You know, yeah. I represent, you know, the creator of the universe. Exactly. I, you know, I, I speak for the Almighty. You know, and when you have that kind of religious zealotry, that is what you get. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. it's just like bin Laden, you know, figuring to represent Allah and all the rest of it. Yeah. Uh, if you so, yeah. object to abortion, then there are, uh, you know, then. Yeah. And again, they do a lot of things. It's, it's legal, not, it's not, this sim- is not illegal. But. It's, it's not simply a place where people go in there and get, uh-huh. you know, abortions and that's it. I mean, they have a lot right, of things yeah. that, I mean, they have, you know, sex education, they have, you know, Fair, women's yeah. health. Sure. Uh, many family many planning. options I mean, that Planned like Parenthood that. Yeah. provides. Exactly. Although, although this is, you know, not all Planned Parenthood facilities are like on-site abortion. Yeah. They don't perform them there. This this actually this would be this would be one where they would do them. Yes. Uh, now you know, uh, I've I, abortion has never like been the biggest hot button topic for me. Yeah. As as an as an atheist, I mean, are there other 
like church state issues yeah. that I'm more concerned with. But again, seems to me, um, if you don't want, you know, stupid, pe- uneducated people, you know, resorting to abortion as some sort of, some form of retroactive birth control, then what we need to have is comprehensive sex education in our school system. Exactly. But the same people who are out there being anti-choice in the abortion issue are anti that type of education. Yeah. All they want is like the abstinence education. Don't do it. Yeah. Don't do, don't have Which sex until you're married. completely unrealistic. And, well, yeah. It is completely unrealistic. Sure. As good idea as abstinence is, mm-hmm. and should definitely be part of the sex education program, it is unrealistic to assume mm-hmm. that you can just go up to a whole bunch of teenagers and say, don't have sex till you're married. Why not? Just because. Yeah. Because that's essentially what they're saying. They're not saying, look, there's a whole bunch of diseases and that's a bad well, thing. Well, they, they and, probably are saying and that. And here's but... ways to prevent it. And, yeah. You know, here's, you know, yeah. You have all these, you know, yeah. ways they're to not saying pregnant. that, right? They're not saying any yeah. of that. They're just saying don't have sex, yeah, because it's immoral, exactly, and what have and, you. And, and uh, I'm sorry, it's unrealistic. Mm. Well, it is something to the effect, you know, they, some of these like Christian student groups, right, that uh, go through the schools, right, and they get like these children to. There's one, some, there's one that has a name, something like um, True Love Waits or some real yeah. sappy name like that. And they're these like <laughs> abstinence kind of promise groups where all the kids, you know, like take a vow that they'll remain abstinent until yeah. they get married, right? And I think, uh, you know, surveys have found out that something like l- over 60% of the students who take those vows ultimately don't, you know, <laughs> follow through, right? Yeah, I mean, they, yeah. you know, the old hormones kick in. And, uh, but again, these kids are the ones who are going to be having unplanned pregnancies and STDs because all they've gotten in terms of their sex education is this authoritarian don't do it yeah. you know abstinence ruling uh with no information about STDs and how to prevent them no 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 uh, condom education no yeah. no uh, other sort of you know contraceptive information around uh and uh and so they they are going out there and find they're breaking their vows and giving into their urges yeah. but without, without knowing how to be any, prepared exactly and uh so the thing is it's obviously you know, clearly abstinence will Solve a lot of sexual problems for you. Of course. <laughs> okay, you're if, not... if used effectively, yeah. it's really, really good. Yeah. I mean, if you're not out there getting any, you're not going to get pregnant, you're not going to get diseases. Sure. I mean, <laughs> abstinence, yeah, it works. Abstinence education doesn't work. Yeah. Okay. Because again, you're, you're, um, what you need is to have the comprehensive thing to where, uh, everything is covered, right? Abstinence, clearly a good idea if you want to be 100% out of trouble. Yeah. But if you're gonna have sex, here's what you need to be aware of. You know, if, yeah. you know, unprotected sex can lead to serious problems. You need to not have this, not, you know, you need to be aware that this, that, or the other thing. Just be aware, you know? Yeah. And, and, but again, the religious right is out there, you know, uh, putting out this idea that, uh, comprehensive sex education is all these long-haired hippies who are, you know, teachers who are passing around bongs and condoms and saying, <laughs> let's all have a big orgy. And, uh, yeah. again, it's fear yeah. rhetoric, right? Yeah. If there, there are no facts substantiating their points. It's all fear rhetoric. Yeah. So, yeah. and it's very effective, you know? Yeah. So, so um, it's, it's not a good thing. And like say, uh, the people who are actually opposing this Planned Parenthood being built, uh, they're mm-hmm. sending spies down to the site like several times a day to find any contractor who could be working on it and then basically, you know, having a whole campaign go against them. And so it's, it's not like they're just, you know, well, sitting back you know, and looking on the website or something, they actually have people out there, yeah. you know, watching it, you know, not be built, eventually. Yeah. Well, um, you know, the concern is that this kind of fanaticism will produce another Paul Hill. Yeah. And it's not just that Christians are going to, you know, be driving past this construction site jeering and yelling insults and, uh, you know, saying you're going to hell and all this kind of stuff. But, you know, what what is what are the risks... That you could get some completely unhinged guy can just drive by and, you know, yeah. a bunch of guys are out there, you know, exactly. working on the scaffolding and he can just open up with a 12 gauge. Yeah. You know, what, I mean, what is the uh, risk of that? I think that it's pretty significant because we, yeah. you know, the, the, the concern was when Paul Hill was executed that this will galvanize the extremist yeah. anti-abortion movement. Yeah. Um, and there was all, there was one guy who was preemptively caught. Okay, um, yeah, yeah. Well, a week or so ago. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but who, so who, but who know who, who knows who else is out there, yeah. you know, on their little blog, right? Yeah, we're you kind know, of seething. Not, not job is out there right now, yeah. So, so it, it's a, it's, it could be a substantial public safety issue. Yeah. You know, yeah. and again, you know, most of these anti abortion people are, I'm sure they're sincere and oh, they course. wouldn't resort to violence, but of course. when you have something that is, is that fanatical, you know, it invites extremism. Yeah. 
Yeah. So we've got callers lining up. Um, so a uh, number to call us up live, 477-2288. Right there on the phone, we got a few folks uh, that we're getting names from. Uh, just quick to mention, if you've never seen our show before, we've been on six and a half years. We take uh, calls, talk about uh, belief, unbelief, atheism versus theism, what have you. Uh, but we also have a very informative fact page on our website at atheist-community.org. If you've never seen us before and you want to ask us a question, uh, it's possible we've already answered it. We've gotten all of our, taken all of the most common questions we've gotten from callers over the six years or so we've been on the air. You know, why, what do atheists think about this or that? Or, you know, what's the difference between an atheist and an agnostic? Questions like that. We've put them online uh, at the fact page on our website, uh, right there at the bottom of your screen. So, could be there. Uh, uh, but otherwise, uh, feel free to call us up if you have a question or you want to talk about something. Uh, just before we get to our first guy, um, I, uh, Yesterday I went out to see this movie, um, Master and Commander. This, uh, Russell Crowe thing, High Seas Adventure. I haven't heard of that one. Yeah, it's a big new movie, it's just opened up. And, um, a terrific movie. You know, it's a big, sprawling yeah. high seas, you know, it's like during the, like the war between Napoleon and England and all that. Okay. Um, but what I really enjoyed about it was that there is a subplot, uh, in this, in the middle of this big adventure story that's all about science. And it's really terrific because there's, um, you know, the whole thing is that it's, it's Russell Crowe is this English ship captain and his ship is, they're, they're playing cat and mouse with this French ship, okay. which has them hopelessly outgunned and it's a more, you know, okay. advanced ship and every, all the rest of it. And, um, <laughs> but there's one point in the movie where, uh, the, uh, they stop off at the Galapagos Islands. Okay. And this is like, set in like 1802, so it's, you know, before Darwin, but, uh. But you have like the ship surgeon is is like you know is is a dedicated naturalist and he's he's all frustrated that he doesn't he can't go on the island and examine all these uh, amazing species that they have on the island. Eventually he gets to though, which is very very different species from what you'd find in you know New England or England. (laughs) <laughs> that's terrific because uh, you know it shows, but but later on he like he gets to you know and and there is this nifty little five minute sequence that shows him and a couple of helpers and they're yeah. wandering around the island and you know with the turtle <laughs> the turtles heads and and collecting stuff and and uh, and ultimately sort of you know don't give any spoilers but you know it's it's because of the ship surgeon and his scientific uh, uh, explorations you know his his research yeah. and his methodologies that. You know, Russell Crowe's character, the captain, gets the inspiration for how they can finally defeat. Okay. Yeah. And I, I thought that was really neat just to see have this big Hollywood blockbuster movie, you know, yeah. showing science in such a positive light and making it like a really significant subplot. Yeah. You know? I mean, Doctor's not an atheist. I mean, but, you yeah. know, because yeah. that's historically, you know, it's accurate. I mean, everyone is, yeah. you know, they have all their religious traditions. Yeah. But just to show science as, as like, it's a cool thing to do. Yeah. You know, and, and yeah. it's not just all stuffy guys in lab coats being boring. And yeah. uh, it really shows like how getting out there and getting your fingers dirty and, yeah. you know. does work. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it's, it's uh, so I, I really enjoyed that, you know, very positive pro-science depiction. You have yeah. so many Hollywood movies are anti-science and, and anti-reason, you know, yeah. signs. Yeah. Um, you know, just yeah. think of so many others. All the, all the movies out there promoting paranormalism and superstition exactly. and what have you. And, you know, it's a dra- dragonfly and all these, you know, uh, yeah. Mothman prophecies and all that. And to show a good pro see, see a good pro science presentation of Hollywood movies. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So, it's a good movie. Everybody ought, ought to, really ought to go see it. It's uh, fun to watch. But, um, okay, uh, Don's been holding very patiently. Hi, how you doing? Well, how you doing, Martin? Just fine. Good. good. Oh, hi, Don. Just sitting here watching your show. Mm-hmm. Hey, uh, I- I've got a question. Uh, it seems that you equating atheism with science, and uh, I think that's a little far-fetched. Uh, I know a lot of scientists that are Christian. And well, sure there are. Oh, yeah. I mean, probably the people yeah. that you're talking about, probably there are more scientists Christians than atheists. Well, I think that the most recent uh, figures from the, the the National Academy of Sciences is something like, uh, you know, it's under thirty percent the number of of their members who like believe in a personal God. But yeah. I mean, but that's irre- but that's beside the point. Well, Nathan, I we're said, not saying I said that there were more that were Christian than atheists. Well, I think that's debatable. But uh, yeah, uh, but the point is, we're not trying to present atheism. Atheism is not a scientific position; it's a it's a philosophy. Okay. But most atheists are, you know, do support science and the yeah. scientific method. Yes, you know. and, and they are Christians. Uh, as a matter of fact, my degree is in computer science. So right. Sure. I mean, that's there's not so... a domain of an atheist. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. Well, there's uh, the uh, yeah. We're not we're not trying uh, to claim that. The, uh, yeah. Can I say this? Uh, Darwinism is is the domain of uh, of atheists, probably. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, not really. So yeah. and uh, any other science that. You know, a large percentage of them, let me say, would endorse uh, uh, atheism. 
I mean, uh, well, most Darwinism. most uh, people who study evolution and, and uh, you know, many of them do take the view that uh, because what we learn from evolution takes a lot of the wind out of the sails of various teleological or supernatural arguments for existence, uh, that uh, you know that atheism just does tend to be the the fallback position. I mean, when you know how nature works, the more you know about how nature works, you don't have to resort to gods or devils and, and magical forces or, you know, the force or what have you to explain the existence of things. Well, that but, would uh, probably be too true if it weren't just a theory. I mean, there's nothing scientific about the proof that, that atheism, uh, Darwinism uh, presents to yeah. science. I thought you said and you're a computer scientist. I am. Okay, I'm well, I'm, about, I, I'm talking about Darwinism. Well, Darwinism, well, first off, that's not even a term yeah, that is used by... Do with computer science. Well, hang on, uh, Don. Uh, Darwinism is not even really a term that's like used by uh, people who study evolution today. I yeah. mean, because most of what we study about evolution is, is very post-Darwinian. You know, Darwin didn't understand a lot of things that are mechanisms that we understand today. He didn't know anything about genetics. He didn't know anything about, uh, um, you know, uh, genetic drift and um, how that actually plays a much larger role than natural selection uh, in terms of determining how species developed. And as a matter of fact, it can probably be said that today, natural selection is very minor, if at all really a player anymore, because human being, the human race has essentially, through, through things like modern uh, technology and medicine, we've pretty much wiped out natural selection as a, as, as a mechanism for how evolution works. I mean, just uh, if you, the, uh, the fact that we, uh, you know, we have modern medicine that, so that we, we actually treat our sick. Our sick don't just, yeah. fall down and die because die, there's yeah. no way to treat them. We yeah. treat our sick. We preserve endangered species. You know, if there's like a species of tiger out there in the wild and there's only 20 of them yeah. left, we round them up, we put them yeah. in preserves. It's, it's, affecting, it's affecting the animal yeah. population less. It's affecting yeah. human race a lot less. Yeah. But it's still something that you can't deny. I mean, again, not, not everyone well, in the world has access to the best medicine that's very true. that we have. That's very true. But what I'm saying yeah. is, it is it's because of modern medicine, we are controlling that in yes. a way, within the last hundred years or so, that we were not able to do yeah. prior. Yeah. When you and say so, we, who are you talking about? Just, no, just I'm just talking about people. Pe people you, you know, know, the modern right, medicine. That's right. Yeah, yeah, I mean, just the right. polio vaccine has helped, you know, everybody yeah. across the board. Okay. So. Yeah. Hey, well, look, Martin, I'll be getting back with you. We still want to have that discussion. All right, sir. Okay, thank you. Okay, take care. Thanks, Sean. Bye. Oh. Uh, so, is that many on two? Okay. Hi, thanks for holding. Hey. How are you doing? I'm good, guys. How are you guys doing? We are well. What's up? Well, two things. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the Church of the Subgenus, they say that you can't use logic when you're talking about religion. I, I don't know too much about the Church of the Subgenus. I have heard well, them before. Oh, okay. But, uh, but that sounds good. <laughs> well, I mean, you probably could, right? I mean, uh, just because an argument's logical doesn't mean it's true. Well, true, I mean, but if it's can, illogical, it probably means it's false, though. Well, that's true. But, I mean, you can make you can make a perfectly logical argument. That's false. True, right. true. Yeah, I yeah. mean, so, yeah. no, false. <laughs> well, so. well, the other thing, though, sir, is uh, that I'm just now throwing in, thinking about it, is the uh, abstinence thing. Mm -hmm. You know, for as advanced country as we are, mm -hmm. that kind of ideology, makes us no better than any third world country. I mean, what, teaching abstinence or not teaching yeah. abstinence? Okay. Just teaching abstinence, you know? Okay. It, it's, it's so ridiculous and absurd. It's like we're not yeah. more advanced than a third world country with well, regards to that. You know, with, with, with the outcome. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Well, well what, you know, I've, I've always been very dismayed how in the past, you know, you, you would get these, you know, these downtrodden third world countries, right, where they've got famine and disease and they're overpopulated and, and what have you. And then the Pope turns up, right, <laughs> and tells everybody that they're going to hell if they use condoms. <laughs> We're like, that's really responsible, you know? I mean, no. that's just not... Um, so, I, it's... Yeah, people are still having sex. Yeah. I, I know, darn it. The, <laughs> what can you do about it? <laughs> it's, it's, but, it's, but the other thing, um, mm -hmm. a few days ago, I just read that... Uh, I didn't know about this. A month ago, this guy, one morning, I think it was Cedar Park, um, Leander area. Okay. Uh, this one guy going to work ran over a couple of kids who were on the high school track team. Oh. And he killed one of them. Oh. Uh, this was a month ago. Oh. And what the kids were doing is they were on the side of the road praying. Oh, 
Yeah, I had heard of that. We actually had that story. Well, you know what? Did? Back, yeah. what did, we, did we have it last week on the show? Uh, it, it, it? Was a se- it was several weeks ago, but yeah, it was basically an early morning you know, I, like cross-country th- team type thing. Yeah. They well, go out and they run and then they turn around and so come he, back. And when they like, get out there, they stop, they sit down and pray. So, so this guy didn't, what, he didn't see him and just he, hit him? He, well, yeah, yeah, he hit him. He That's terrible. One of them, That's terrible. So he didn't oh. get convicted, you know. It got overturned, you know, he didn't have to do jail time. Yeah. Or get charged with this. Well, I'm sure it was a terrible accident. Yeah, I, I think yeah, it was, yeah, it was an accident. accident. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, again, God was involved, and these two kids, and God wasn't listening, or, or he was out to lunch, or who knows what. Well, yeah, I mean. Again, the problem would be. If I was a Christian, I'd be concerned about that. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, two kids sitting around praying, yeah, and they're not getting. duty, if nothing else. Getting uh, hit. You know, it is very, very tough to be, you know, a rationalist in a situation where, and then you're confronted with something that's like a real tragedy. You know, because it seems so grossly insensitive to sit there and kind of go, I told you so. Like yeah. when you have a seat, like so, there was something a few years ago up in Dallas, right? Well, some guy um, wandered into a Dallas church and just did a Columbine on the place, right? Yeah. And, and mowed a whole bunch of people down. And it's just sort of like, you know, it, it's very difficult to, you know, when it's, 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 you know, when you sort of, it is kind of situation when you're an unbeliever, you just kind of have to feel like, you know, well, you kind of really ought to shut up just out of, you know, respect, you just see, yeah, because yeah, you don't want to kind of go, well, gee, you know, I mean, here you are in God's house and, and someone can walk in and kill you dead. And when you're praying, I mean, it just, what does that tell you about God listening to your prayers or listening to you? But that's like the same kind of reasoning and logic as the guys that don't want that building built. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Know? Well, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, uh, I know, I know. It's, it, it does seem to me that when, when you consider that religion must have really, really powerful emotional button mashing oh, yeah. uh, you know, abilities. Well, that's all it has. It has no when, logic mind. When, uh, well, again, it, it, might even, it, it, may, it may even have logical arguments that just don't happen to be rooted in, in any sort of reality. But again, <laughs> but, 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 but again to make people, to, to make people you know, when, when something like this happens, right, the devout believers will make excuses. Yeah. Okay. You know, and, it's, and when you would think that something like this, right, I was sitting on the side of the road praying to God, you know, and, and, and I got hit by a car. Yeah. You know, what the, so, what, I mean, just think about that for a second. Was yeah. God listening to you? It's, again, the, the, uh, another example would be the parents who, you know, the, the, the people who don't believe in medicine oh, or yeah, hospitals. Yeah. So exactly, they don't, yeah. they, so their child gets sick and this has happened and we've actually, there have actually been parents Several times. convicted. Yeah. Um, where, uh, you know, they, so they just leave the child at home and pray over the child. And uh, the, the child dies because of, of, of some simple ailment, but, but it didn't get the simple treatment that it could have gotten. Yeah. The parents just chose to sit there and pray over it. And it's sort of like, all right, look, this is terrible and it's tragic and we're all very sad about that, but let's think about what led to this, right? Yeah. I mean, in this circumstance, were the parents' beliefs proven to be true or were they not proven to be true? Yeah. I would argue that they were not proven to be true. They were probably Proven to be untrue. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it's but again, it, it is amazing that the the uh, the emotional uh, the control that these beliefs can have over people that when confronted with something that should be that obvious that should make them scratch their heads and because that's what happened to me, right? I mean, it's a, not not a specific situation, but it was just a, an accumulation of when I was young and, and and I was going to church, but I was observing things going around in the world, yeah. and I I was saying, okay, well, but now why would God let that happen if He loves everyone? And then I would ask my minister and my youth pastor and everything like that. And I would just not give these answers that made sense. They weren't satisfying to me. Yeah. But, and, and that, that process, do, you know, that more people don't, you know, aren't inspired to ask those kinds of questions. Instead, they'll make excuses. Oh, well, God has a plan. It'll all be all right at some point in the future. Yeah. You know, yeah. I don't get it. You know, when I was growing up also, I had to go to catechism. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, you know, I dreaded it, man. You yeah. know, I'm talking about elementary school. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I would hide from the nuns, right? But anyway... <laughs> I, uh, I, I, back then as a little kid, I always had questions. Yes. And they couldn't answer my questions, so I could never re- really fully believe. But then they did a good, great job at um, putting their um, their guilt inside of me, you know, because I grew up with this guilt, you know. Oh. So like when you do. Oh, so hell yeah, it, it, but I'm, I'm sorry. So for making, so for asking those questions, they made you feel guilty. Uh, no, no, the, the guilt oh. part, you know, is for you to yeah. when you grow up, you're living with this guilt, like. Mm-hmm. Masturbation, you know, like after oh, right, you know, yeah. teen years, you know, come oh, man, you talk about feeling guilty. Yeah. yeah, so just, just, just they laid that on so heavily that oh, yeah. it overwhelmed everything else. Yeah, it yeah. took me years to get over that. Yeah, you know? yeah. Luckily, luckily, I wasn't in a 
very strictly religious household or anything like that. I did go to catechism for a little while, went to church up until like 11th grade or so. But it wasn't really, you know, ingrained constantly in me. So, Uh so usually my big thing was just that, you know, I didn't believe it. I didn't see what everybody else was seeing. I'm I'm wondering, you know, not everybody can be wrong. I just don't get it. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I'd try, I'd, I'd, you know, pray and all this kind of stuff. I'd try and figure out what is it that I'm missing here that everyone else is getting. And eventually I just figured out, well, you know, nothing. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you guys have have a good time. It's a good show. Thanks a lot. Thanks for your call and your input. Take care. All right. Uh, Who's been waiting on three? Don't forget that number, 477-2288. Call us up live. Uh, Don is holding. Hi. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Uh, Pretty good. Actually, I had uh, two questions for you. Go right ahead. Um, The first one was you were referring about to the abortion. Yes. And if we were to actually indoctrinate a, a new constitutional amendment so that that just basically stated that abortion was legal, would it calm, you think, in the most majority of the social masses and you would not have this protesting on both sides, or would you think it would still be deadlocked into 50-50 between the, the Christian right and the left? You mean the uh, – if are you asking if there were a constitutional amendment right. saying – Right, like, saying like a, a, a natural article so that, it, okay. so that the Supreme yeah. Court – even if they, you know, even if they were the the biggest, rightest, mm-hmm. you know, even if they're wildest dreams, they could not snap their fingers and throw it out. Well, I mean, you know, the uh, the the, uh, the prohibition was a constitutional amendment, and that did ultimately get overturned. So even well, if no, it, no, it got repealed. It got repealed. Yeah, well, and but, that's that's a whole different process. But but, but it could still happen, right? So well, if, well, it could, but, but yeah. it, would, it, it would be. Yeah, it's it would it's be not a, easy. It's yeah. not. It's, yeah. it's, it's far less easier to do yeah. because of the two thirds majority. But but, but, but yeah. even when prohibition was. Was and it was still, you know, was accepted mm-hmm. until it, they people woke up and you know did it. But I'm saying if it was, if it was impl- implemented today as a, as a constitutional amendment, just as abortion being okay, abortion is legal, state to state, yada yada yada. Uh-huh. Would you still do you think you'd still see all this pro- protesting on both sides left and oh, right? Sure, sure you would. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Definitely. You think so? You yeah. don't think you would calm down? Well, no, but you have to remember that the um, the, and and we're not saying that uh, and. We're not saying that there aren't sound, you know, good medical and scientific reasons why, uh, you know, people should be dissuaded from having abortions. Uh, but most of the anti-abortion protesters are motivated by their uh, religious zeal. So, and, well, and, and, no, and no constitutional amendment is going to well, shut no, that up. But I'm not, there, there are those, but I'm also referring to just the, the, the people who think, you know, that the, the procedure is wrong, not based on a... Not based yeah. on a religious faction, but just a just yeah. a, just a the mutilation. Well, faction. I think that, I think yeah. that those yeah. folks would still be out there trying to persuade, uh, you know, through through whatever you know uh, means that they could, uh, that you know their point, right? I, you know, you would still and just having a if we had a constitutional amendment saying abortion's fine now, you know, now let's move on to the next thing. You know that that still would not uh, you know eradicate uh, you know the freedom Social of free, well or the freedom of speech right I mean right. the ability of people to say look I don't like this I don't think it's fair and here's why well no, that's fine freedom, I'm not I'm not saying it would calm not, I'm, not, I'm not asking yeah. to calm I'm just saying do you think it would die down I don't know that it would I okay. think I think it would yeah. actually because our country yeah. because it hasn't been brought it. to the forefront all that much mm-hmm. and it hasn't been debated thoroughly. I think it would actually make things worse if just all of a sudden, just out of the blue, you know, well, right, they well, say that, okay, I would, fine, I would think, they're I would legal. The debate would happen, but I, that, it would make things worse that, in the short term. That's the only thing really thing that Roe re, Ro, uh, versus Wade really bugged me was that it didn't really finalize anything. Because for 25 years, people are saying, well, you know, if mm-hmm, you get yeah. three rightists in there or three leftists, it's going to go one way or the other. Yeah, yeah. And it really didn't. That, that's what the only, I, otherwise, to be honest, I'm not pro or con. I really don't care, but I, I see yeah. it on the news every five minutes. And yeah. I was trying to see, try to find a, try to find a more uh, logical or you know solution to mm-hmm. steal it back, or is it just so in, 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 inherently inhuman into us? It is. You, you yeah. Can't. It, it is. It is. It is a. I think this is one of those topics where you have people on Foursquare on one side or the other, and never the twain shall meet. Right. Okay. You're never going to persuade someone who 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 is. Uh, Convinced as the, you know, as sure as they're born that this is a horribly evil thing to do, you're never going to convince them that there could possibly be benefits. And I mean, I've heard, I've had some of these discussions. Uh, you know, the uh, the um, you know, if if the mother has a complicated pregnancy and 
if, unless she gets her baby aborted, it could kill her. But yeah, if she yeah, does, her yeah, and you know, and their view to sense to, to it's it's God's will, right? I mean, if it's God's will for that baby to have that deformity or that mother to perish or what have you, then it's we should not mess around with God's will, you know. And and so when you're uh, so. Uh, the upshot is I don't think you would see any, any um, you know, cessation of the hostilities between the two sides. Uh, it's one of those topics that is just so lo- uh, emotionally loaded. Um, and, 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 and it's not – I don't completely like sympathy with uh, you know, the, uh, the people who are against abortion. I mean it does seem yeah. to be you – know, yeah, the whole idea of uh, you know, aborting a fetus and, and ending a life before it has a chance to begin, and, unless it's a dire necessity – does seem like a really kind of not nice yeah. thing to do. Right. I mean, it, uh, it should, it, it's, it should be the, it should job, be basically the last I gotta, resort. I gotta head out. All right. Well, thanks, thanks. for your input. Thanks, Sean. But yeah, I mean, abortion should definitely be the, pretty much the last, the last final way to do something. Yeah. There's always adoption. Yeah. There's always birth control before the fact. Yeah. Um, I mean, there are just lots, I mean, again, lots and lots of ways of, to, to deal with this situation before mm-hmm. it gets down to abortion. Yeah. I think um, to, to answer so. uh, to answer the caller's question, I think most effectively, it's not going to be like a constitutional amendment saying one thing or the other yeah. that will cause you know the livid debate to you know yeah. recede to any uh, substantial degree. What's going to do it is, I think, to improve the quality of sex education yeah. in our educational program. If more kids and if more young people, when they start hitting those hormonal you yeah. know, puberty years, understand the real consequences uh, that sexual activity can lead to. Uh, when you're not emotionally ready for yeah. it. Because yeah, you might be, you know, when you're 14 years old, your body's physically ready to go out there and oh, yeah. start getting it on. Mentally, you don't know the ramifications. Yeah. If you have that education, I think you'll see a, 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 a severe reduction in the number of unplanned and unwanted pregnancies. Yeah. And then at that point, that you know goes down. And then the only real now uh, concerns that you have uh, about abortion would be for things like rape or incest. Yeah. Or, uh, or, or, head of, or health crises. Yeah. You know, like a, yeah. uh, uh, there could be something seriously that could go wrong that could endanger exactly. the mother. Exactly. This is why, and you know, the, the, the big outrage with the, the Bush administration doing this whole partial birth abortion thing that they just passed, right? Yeah. yeah. Is that that provision did not uh, include any sort of exception for yeah. uh, the mother's life. Yeah. And that was what was crazy about it. So, yeah, if the mother uh, is going to die, if she carries yeah. maybe a term, too bad. Mm hmm. Sorry, but you know, it, but it's there's no real, unfortunately, there's no real black or white, yeah. uh, easy easy solution for this um, at all. Yeah. And but I think again, you know, it's not going to be laws, it's not going to be amendments, it's going to be education that does it. Who's on the phone here? We have blinking lights and no names. We're uh, <laughs> we got lights lit up like a. Hang on, people, we're working on it. Yeah. So <laughs> anyway, uh, while we're waiting, we got a half hour left in the show, so uh, you know, call us up with your feedback. But if you don't get through, which happens. Um, you know, every show we never uh, managed to get around to the last couple of callers. Don't fret. Uh, TV at atheist-community.org is our viewer feedback uh, email. Uh, that's for you uh, to send us questions. Um, you know, straighten us out if you think we're wrong about something. Uh, we answer all the emails we get except for the Nigerian oh. <laughs> uh, money scams yep. that come our way. Which you, yeah, you know, we've we, gotten a few of those. You have to wonder what is going on in somebody's head when they send something to an address. TV at atheist-community.org, and it's like it's all this yeah, I've got dear 10, brother in Jesus, bless you in Jesus' name. Please I know I've got this, I've got this ten million dollars, which I want to go toward, you know, yeah. helping God promote his, you know, his <laughs> his idea. Why the, are you going to send yeah, it to an to... atheistcommunity.org? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's going to I'm be the uh, less fertile soil for your message. Maybe they know what they're doing, and they're just sending it to us for a laugh. In which yeah, case, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you do have to wonder, you know, I mean, uh, you yeah. know, so do they read these addresses before they send this out? Well, I can't remember with exactly. With these greetings saying, you know, bless you and, yeah. and keep you in the Lord's name. And I can't remember and exactly what it is. I can't remember the site offhand, but they have somebody out there, and even one of my friends did this a couple times, mm-hmm. where he wrote back to these people and he just played with them mm-hmm. for days on end, mm-hmm. basically writing them back saying, you know, yes, I'm just a little old grandmother and <laughs> I, I want to, I want to help you out and what must I do? And, mm-hmm. you know, my daughter, she's in college now and, and she's been looking into the Nigerian situation and, and just drags it on for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks, basically talking to these people and not getting absolutely anywhere. 
And it's it's just what great. Are they, what it's were they great saying? Fun. What were they saying in return to his? Well, they're basically saying, emails. you know, oh well, it's very nice to hear from you. We're sorry about your situation. Now, what you need to do is wire us twelve hundred dollars, and you know, send us your phone number so we can actually talk about this. And she's <laughs> like, you know, well, I don't actually have a phone right now, and you know, <laughs> and then just go goes off on some weird tangent about uh-huh. things and. It, they're you, great discussions. You I like mean, got, pudding? I like pudding. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> They've got posts on the internet where it's just letter after letter after letter. <laughs> and all they say in response is, send us the $1,200 already, <laughs> bitch. God, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> it's, it's great reading. It's so much fun. But, uh, you see the, the, the spoof thing they did on the Landover Baptist website? The spoof mm-hmm. story where they basically had like the Landover Baptist people you know, fell for the thing. Okay. The whole Nigerian thing. They got on the Landover Baptist plane and flew to Nigeria. To, we were so horrified when we heard about this yeah. situation there. And, <laughs> and they go through this entire uh, long, you know, funny, bogus story about how, you know, what yeah. they're going to, what they're planning to do with the money. And <laughs> <laughs> it's just like. Uh, well, Landover Baptist is one, definitely one of the better sites out there. Oh, it's hilarious. Lots of fun. But you know, though, that uh, behind all the hilarity, there is a grim reality to it, which is that, you know, people, some folks have been taken in by this. And, like, the authority, the country is like, you know, it's this Islamic, you know, yeah. lunatic fundamentalist stronghold, right? And um, the authorities are all in kind of on this scam, right? Yeah. I mean, most of them, the police and the Oh, yeah, in Nigeria. People go yeah. over there, you know, they, they get scammed by this thing. And some folks have gotten over there and, you know, ended up sort of killed and left on deserted, lonely roads. And it's, it's pretty grim. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but, anyway, that's, uh, that's a, a real thing that is... Uh, we're still like waiting on names, and these lights have been going and going and going. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, four seven seven two two eight eight. What else? What else is there uh, to talk about today? Uh, only that. Uh, see, I mentioned the movie already. Ah, uh, yes, Wait. they do have a oh. for any going back to the astronomy side of things. All right. Uh, there is a Leonid meteor shower next tuesday evening i want to say oh fun um the 19th which i think is tuesday yeah um and i think it peaks at actually like nine o'clock our time 9 p.m okay and so what do we have to look for it in the uh you would be looking most likely uh pretty far to the east okay i would expect um but uh but yeah like i mean that could be it's it's probably not going to be all that active this year Okay. The last couple of years have been fairly good with well, it. What's the economy? This, nah, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, this year it's probably not going to be all that spectacular. But still, if you can get out there and it's a clear night, which we haven't had one of those in about two months, <laughs> yeah. um, might see uh, some shooting stars. Yeah. So. Oh, fun. Well, that'll be great. Okay, so wait, did we lose that one guy or what's happening? Oh, we're getting more names. Finally. Thank you. <laughs> all right. I think we have Matt on line one. Yeah. Uh, all right. We get Matt. Hey, thanks for calling. Hey, how are you? We're good. What's up? Uh, I got a quick question. I've never seen your show before. I was just kind of curious. I kind of got caught a few things you were saying. Uh, I was curious. At, being an atheist, and I'm not, but I mean, obviously you guys are. Did, is there a belief in, in an atheist of, of anything beyond us? I'm just curious. Are you talking about like the supernatural? Just, just anything beyond us. Well, rabbits. I mean, are you yeah, I, I mean, I need. I, whatever. Yeah. I mean, is there? I mean, I'm just, I'm just, I mean, I'm just asking. Yeah. I'm not trying to. No, you know. no, I understand. Yeah. I, and, and and what we're trying to do is just figure out exactly. I mean, I assume that you're talking about some kind of supernatural, uh, spirits, ghosts, gods, souls. That's well, I guess. Thing. I guess what I mean is, I mean, I, I see you guys with uh, the Jesus Free Evolve, and I see that the one thing it seems like, and that, that doesn't offend me at all. But uh, the one thing I, I, I notice is it, it always seems to be almost like uh, against. Christianity instead of all other religions. You know, okay. I've never seen anything with okay. any other religion. Okay, well, we can explain that. Yeah, um, yeah. It's, it's not, well, first of all, let me, let me explain that quickly. Okay. okay. Um, the only reason that you will hear us on this show, like, be critical of Christian beliefs more than others is because, you know, America is mostly Christian, right? Right. So that's just the culture we lived in. If we were living in Saudi Arabia and there wasn't a risk of getting shot, uh, you know, we'd be talking about Islam. Sure. Or, or where else? So that's that's just a, a, a byproduct of of you know the fact this is an American show. Okay. Uh, so, but we do. I mean, we we've talked about UFOs and psychics and yeah. uh, you know people who believe in that sort of thing too. And and, we and just, other religions. And we just apply the same kind of critical standards to the claims that are being made. You know, it's like if, that's fine if you can, if if a, if a person making a claim can meet their burden of proof for the claim, then then you know we'll we'll be happy to look at the evidence that's presented. Well, I we think, just. I mean, like when I, I talk to you know I'm a, I'm a get ready to be in grad school at UT, and, you know, mm-hmm. I'm exposed to a lot of different people, and I really love that part of it, but yeah. uh, people, uh, you know, 
I really liked the evolutionary. I'm a psychology major. The evolutionary part was great. Uh-huh. But the thing, the thing with people that are diehard evolutionists, even I watched the thing on PBS the other night. I mean, now, now there's different theories. This is the Big Bang instead of the Big Bang. Now, now some physicists are thinking, well, maybe there's two universes colliding. And my whole yeah. thing is, is like. And what I mean by the unknown, no, I don't necessarily mean um, ghosts and things hovering around us, but sure. at, at some point, there, there's a point where none of us can explain. Oh, absolutely. You know, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Big yeah. Bang or no Big Bang, something something was there before something caused it. There is, yeah. We, we acknowledge the fact that there are certainly limits to what uh, the human race knows about stuff right now. And that's fine. And we know that, and we think that the most uh, honest thing for a person to say, uh, when you kind of reach that limit of knowledge... Like, you know, how, why is there a universe and stuff like that? We don't know. And so the honest thing to say when you're confronted with a question like that is, well, we don't know. We can speculate, but we don't know. And that's, that's a lot more um, honest and I think uh, legitimately, you know, scientific in terms of how that kind of spirit of inquiry is pursued than to just kind of make up a thing and adopt that as a, as a dogmatic belief system that, uh, you know, you won't, you know, that you can't... Uh, that A, you either can't prove, and B, you won't really be, you're not willing to be shaken uh, from if, uh, if some sort of evidence to the contrary presents itself and says, well, but maybe that's more likely to be this other thing. Sure. Uh, so, uh, so I, I think that, um, you know, clearly I think the methodologies of science are just much better than adopting a faith or a belief, you know, however comforting it may be to people. And I think that, uh, you know, much of the appeal of religion, not, it's not just that people are raised in that kind of climate, being in the sort of culture we're in, uh, and it's not just that religion, you know, uh, provides a lot of emotional comfort in terms of dealing with, uh, you know, uh, people have this need to feel loved, uh, you know, that you have, a, you know, everyone has a fear of death that they're worried about and, and that sort of thing. But I think a lot of people are also just uncomfortable with the idea that, that you just mentioned, which is that, you know, ultimately you, you got to acknowledge that there's just a whole bunch of stuff about this big wide universe we live in that you don't know. And I think a lot of people, uh, the most staunchly religious people, are uncomfortable with that. They don't well, like the idea the that there's... That we still uh, continue uh, to function, like for me to continue to function through, the, through the, our lives and in the world. Uh-huh. And so, some, of us ha- some of us do a little bit better than others, and that, that's okay. Uh-huh. Uh, but to have that drive, then I think there's, there's faith in all of us. I mean, we all drive our cars every day, but we all don't know exactly how they work. We get them and we expect them to work. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know how I'm watching you on TV right now, but I'm talking mm-hmm. to you on the cell phone watching you on TV. I don't mm-hmm. know how, but I trust the TV's going to, you know, I can see you. Yeah. That, that to me is, is symbolic of faith. But, and I heard, but you, I heard you say something earlier yeah, about why, why certain things happen. Um, well, every single human, this is why a lot of people, whether they're Christian or not, they don't, they don't understand the, the whole part. You cannot judge anybody because every one of us is conflicted in some way. Every single person has some type of conflict. And that's why there, and that's why there's never going to be peace. And yet yeah, everyone has the right to protest and all that mm-hmm. and, uh, for anything. But no matter what, there will never be peace because none of us are ever completely at peace within ourselves. And so it's not necessarily uh, if somebody were to ask me, oh, why did this little baby get raped, or why did this happen? And these mm-hmm. are all terrible things. I'm a father myself. Mm-hmm. That that is us. That is that is us doing that to each other. That, as far as in my beliefs, which mm-hmm. I'm not pushing on anybody, mm-hmm. I don't believe that's God doing that. How you meant, how some people have to, have to do say that. Yeah. But the conflict is because we're conflicted, and and if, as long as we're all conflicted, the earth is in the world, and our lives are going to be conflicted until you know until the end, until the unknown, of whatever we're going to go into. Okay. Okay. Um, I mean, do you do you see what I'm saying? I, mean, I, see, I see what you're yeah. saying. I got a um, I got a couple uh, responses, and then let Ashley okay. uh, uh, chime in. I want to get back first. Uh, you made two things. Uh, the first one, like uh, where you talked about different types of faith. I mean, sure, there is um, faith is a is a word that does have a real broad stretch of meaning, right? So, uh, yeah, you could say, but but the type of faith that is employed by, you know, a person getting in their car and and not being quite sure how the car works is a little bit different than uh, the kind of faith that is employed to, uh, like, believe in some sort of supernatural concept. You know, I mean, ultimately, you can, if you really want to know how your car works, you can study, you know, auto mechanics and learn. Um, we don't have a similar, uh, we don't have similar tools at our disposal for confirming the existence of all the supernatural claims that the various world's religions make uh, in order to, uh, in, you know, in, in order to confirm those kinds of beliefs and verify those kinds of faiths, you know, in the same way that we do about just everyday ordinary things that we encounter all the time. It's a different type of faith. You know, there is there are leaps of faith that are very big and there are leaps of faith that are very small. It's one thing to say, 
I have faith in my ability to do my job well. Uh, and it's another thing entirely to say, I have faith that, you know, the universe was created by a, a giant invisible rabbit named Phil, uh, you know, who has his book of magic spells. So it's different types of faith. So that's the one thing I wanted to bring up. The other thing, when you talk about people being conflicted internally, and this is very true, and, and, and this is a thing that a lot of people attach themselves to religion to address. And so that's understandable and that, you know, religion does, you can sometimes acknowledge that and try to, you know, come up with ways to help people deal with those conflicts. But I don't think that um, that means that we should not confront bad ideas. There are bad ideas and there are bad things that happen. And we can't just brush them off and say, okay, well, so we're all conflicted and we're all flawed in some no, deep I sort of way. Yeah. So, so I still think that it's very, very important for people to be uh, dedicated and passionate about, you know, if you have an idea that you think is right and that you think you can really argue for, uh, that's that is uh, very important, and of course, you know, we, no one no one is infallible or, or uh, omniscient or are perfect in any way here. But we're all trying to get to, along together and do the best we can. And um, you know, it and it tends to be the more irrational beliefs rather than the more rational philosophies that ultimately you you get somebody like Paul Hill or like the nine eleven terrorists who who finally just decide, all right, well, if you don't think the way I do, I'm going to shoot you or I'm going to crash a plane into you. So I think that, you know, a distinction should be made between, you know, there, there are ideas out there that are better and more sound than others. And we all need to kind of, and, and I, I think that only having, you know, free and open debate is going to help, you know, weed those things out. Oh, I'm all you know? for that. Yeah. I, was just, I was just making the point that, that no, they're good we're never going to be able to avoid yeah. it. And yeah. as far as the car thing, yeah, I understand. But even, even like mm-hmm. medically, like I was talking to a, a, an undergraduate student the other day in biology, mm-hmm. and she was saying, and she's almost, she's almost done with her degree plan, Mm-hmm. And it's all evolutionary based, but I mean, even they were saying it's all her different organic chemistries, and, and no matter how much they know, the, I love the professors at UT because mm-hmm. they're, they're honest. Like you know, even though we know all this, we don't know everything. Yeah. And like a medical doctor, yeah. yes, this is how the body functions, but for some reason, sometimes it doesn't do what we think yeah. it's supposed to do. Yeah. That's that. That's just all symbolic to me of how yeah. much we, how little we really do know, even though we think we know. And that's why science is so cool, because science is like there's always more to learn. About, about life, the universe, and everything. And I think that that is a much healthier, uh, you know, uh, attitude to adopt than, you know, not every religion is dogmatic, but a lot of them are. All, all religions are like, look, it's handed down through our scriptures, and this is all you need to know, and don't question. And, uh, you know, again, not every religious person takes that attitude, but, uh, many do. And I think that's, that's not an attitude that's out there, you know, doing anything to expand knowledge. That's designed to shut, you know, that sort of exploration down. You know, that, that kind of investigation and that spirit of, you know, there's always more to learn. That, you know, that's a belief system that's designed to shut that process down. And uh, I think that really, mm-hmm. you know, sells... That's a, that's a philosophy that creates short. servants. That's yeah. a philosophy that creates servants. Yeah, good, yeah, so, good point. Yeah. Um, like I said, I mean, if you don't question anything, you know, you're, you're just going to, you know, when yeah. someone from higher up says, this is what you should do, okay, fine. And oh, that's, that, that's not helping anything. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> but uh, but but so. those but uh, you made some really really good points there, Matt, and I appreciate. I just want to uh, first of all, I mean, thank you guys for letting me uh, absolutely uh, uh, talk to you about. It. I've never, but I, but the, and the last thing I just want to say is that I just think you know, and I am a Christian person, mm-hmm. and I'm not pushing my belief on anybody. But that's great. Uh, I believe the problem is that people just is, is the judging and and uh, a lot of what's portrayed in the media and these the religious right and all this. I think mm-hmm. that stereotype is developed and is, and is blanketed amongst everybody. But really, none of us can point the finger and none of us can judge one another. You know what I'm saying? Well, I think that uh, on a broad scale, you shouldn't. We should not. People should not generalize. Uh, but I think that uh, you know cer- certainly when individuals do uh, things that they shouldn't do, you know, the, they I think they can fairly be judged. I think that what guys like you. Uh, you know, Christians like you who are, I, I think in the, you know, not everyone out there is a Roy Moore or a Paul Hill or a, or a fanatic. And, um, you know, it's, it's the folks like yourself, the Christians like yourself, who need to be the ones standing up and saying, look, please, we, we don't all conform to this extremist stereotype. Uh, there are many of us out there who, who want to be able to, you know, get along well with other folks and, and exchange ideas back and forth. And, uh, you know, we're not all fanatics, and, and, and you guys also need to be the ones out there confronting the fanatics, saying, please don't do this. You know, you know Mr. Politician who is out there, you know, waving your religion right. around on your sleeve to get votes, you know, that's, that's just, you know, that's not good. You know, that's, that's something those guys need to hear from Christians, like, they're not going to listen to us, right? We're the, we're the evil, godless, you know, you know, commie, atheist, scum. But, you know, the, <laughs> but when other Christians say, 
you know, don't, uh, you know, don't, uh, you know, we don't appreciate you fanatics out there, you know, poisoning the well for the rest of us. You know, that's, that's, you know, I want to see guys like you out there confronting the Ashcrofts and the yeah, Moors the guy and the that, Falwells. Uh, was, wrote the book on all the morals and everything and he just got busted with a gambling problem? Yeah, uh, yeah Bill that Bennett. Was, yeah, Bill that, Bennett. Was, that was quite a few months ago, yeah. Bill Bennett, yeah. yeah. The morality czar who, yeah. who blew something like half a million dollars yeah. of our money yeah. gambling. So yeah, yeah, if you're going to be in the limelight and you're going to you're going to preach whatever you're saying, you better live by it. You know? yeah, very be true. Careful. Very true. <laughs> oh, well, hey, uh, you know, Matt, why don't you just call us back whenever? Okay. Great, man. I appreciate it. Thanks Have a good week. On. All right. Good questions from uh, uh, who is Juan holding on to? Is that who we're, is next? Yes. Hi. Thanks for holding. Hi guys. How are you doing? Uh, good afternoon. Uh, uh, again, I've got I've got uh, three three items to to comment on, and then and then uh, like to hear your thoughts on that. Okay. Um, one is on tragic death, the second one is on, on sex drive, mm-hmm. and the third one is about uh, the answer that we give as atheists when we reach the limits of knowledge and we say, well, we don't know. Mm-hmm. Well, going to the first one, the tragic death, mm-hmm. um, the um, athletes that uh, got run over by a car, one of them died and whatever, mm-hmm. they got hurt. Um, it, the 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 news prominently displayed the fact that they were, you know, stopping to pray. And, mm-hmm. uh, of course, the, the news, they don't make any any associations between this and that, but they prominently display that fact, mm-hmm. leaving it for everyone kind of like to wonder, hey, what's going on? But um, uh, mm-hmm. on our side, for example, we don't want to rub it in and say, see, I told you, there is no God listening to you. Precisely. Otherwise, yeah. is it, but we don't want to do that out of respect for yeah. the people in the tragedy, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. However, when tragedy, tragic death strikes the non-believer, mm-hmm. the believers are prompt to rub it in. I mean, mm-hmm. at least that's what I've heard of them. For example, there was there was um, the tragic death of this famous atheist, atheist, uh, this lady. What was her oh, name? Madeline Murray. Madeline O'Hare. Yeah. Right. Very she well, murdered by when, some. when 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 that guy. happened, a lot of uh, the the comments and press and things like that, or private conversation. Like I had some private conversation with some people, mm-hmm. and they implied to me that you see, yeah. that's what happens for not believing, right? Yeah. Yeah, the same, and, uh, the same sort of thing was... Which was, my yeah. response was, hey, wait a second. Tragic death is not the exclusive monopoly <laughs> of non-believers. <laughs> yeah. If you want to look yeah. at it in a statistical way, tragic death affects more the believer. There are more Christians out there who are tragically yeah. Yeah. killed, you know, through no fault of their own. Uh, I sometimes they follow them. Look at Northern Ireland. So that that uh, you know mm-hmm. argument doesn't hold any water. I mean, but they are mm-hmm. they are nasty when they when they try to rub it in and see you're a non-believer. Therefore, a um, tragic death, death awaits you. Yeah, yeah. They, they did the same things when uh, when Carl Sagan and Isaac Asimov were both dying. Yeah. Uh, in their you know final diseases, you know they would get to you know each other. I read, you know, their their personal assistants and secretaries and things were getting, you know, the occasional snide, you know, yeah. letter or phone call from some believers saying, "Well, Steve, this is God's punishment because he's an atheist." Yeah. Just sort of like, hmm, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, so, what was, uh, you know, Pat Robertson's colon cancer all about? You know, <laughs> uh, prostate cancer. Yeah, prostate cancer. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Or Jan Crouch had the colon cancer. That's right. Yeah. You know. But it's just important to point out in things like that that, again, you're asking for comments, I guess. Um, do you want to stoop to that level? Yeah. You know, I mean, it, the polite thing to do is outside of outside of the personal attacks or personal, you know, where you could say, look at those kids who died while praying or something like that. You kind of, you know, step back from it, you know, while it's a while it's in the news and then come back and say, you know, look, we have reasons for not believing in this stuff. You know, we're trying to explain it. We're saying there's a better way to look at the world mm-hmm. um, rather than just stooping down to that level and saying, ha, 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 we told you so. Right. Uh, um, you know, the polite thing to do is to find the lessons from that uh, occurrence and try to prevent a similar situation from happening again. Exactly. Yeah. For example, you know, the, the fact that, uh, well, you know that the car is king on the roads and, uh, you know, you're trying to compete with these 45-mile-an-hour uh, vehicles, Two-ton, you know, 2,000-pound yeah, 
vehicles that are coming at you, you're trying to compete with them, at some point there's going to be an accident. So <laughs> one of the best things to do is you're going to exercise, <laughs> get out of the way. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, don't, don't do exercise in, a safe in the way street. And try to, yeah. to yeah. prevent those things. And uh, yeah. also the design of the roads, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, the secular state is very good at preventing accidents, future accidents, that yeah. is, from situations like that. So there is a lesson to be, to be learned that their deaths cannot be in vain. And, you know, they, well, let's, Stop this from happening again. Anyway, yeah. the, the second point that I wanted to make was the um, the sex drive about sex drive. this uh, um, the the uh, uh, the sex uh, education of, of, of kids, uh, telling them not to have sex because then they're going to have an unwanted pregnancy. Therefore, they're going to have to uh, you know either decide whether the baby should live or die. And and here comes the controversy, you know, about sure. building buildings where their people are going to have abortions and this and that. Right. Well, we know in the past that whoever was in charge of sex education was failing miserably, especially the church, right. telling people don't have sex. Um. And people were having sex because telling people, telling young people not to have sex goes against animal nature. Mm -hmm. And as much as we want to think that we are conscious beings in charge of our bodies, Mm-hmm. You know, it doesn't work that way. When you're 15 and horny, yeah, yeah that's it's, right. But what I'm saying, <laughs> it's but, tough. But yeah. Besides yeah. putting it that way, we can put it in in in, in a sure. more natural way, in the sense that life wants to live and reproduce, yeah. and life does not care about the arguments that are, that are in your head. Life wants to live and reproduce. That's why people get together and they, and all of a sudden people get pregnant, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, so. Because if we're fighting against a natural force, people, mm-hmm. you know, life wants to reproduce regardless. Yeah. So we're fighting that force. Well, instead of, of telling them not to, well, how about a little bit of education and, uh, and, and try to minimize the instances where, where the, uh, the abortion is, is the, is the, the, the res, you know, the, the, yeah. the last thing yeah. to resort to. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but, if, if, uh, remember how they used to do it before the, the abortion was legal. Well, people still got pregnant, and what happened? Yeah. Well, yeah. people would get illegal abortions, dirty abortions, and, die, and yeah. youngsters would die. You know, women yeah. would die. Women were the victims. Well, remember, remember what things were. I also like, you know, I mean, it's just we certainly don't want to go back to this Comstock era, where, um, you know, the uh, what was her uh, the uh, the uh, the very first, uh, you know, the woman out. It wasn't. Wasn't no Amy Simple McPherson was an evangelist. Good grief! I'm thinking about the woman who, uh, you know, was the first to conceive of the whole idea of family planning and yeah. contraception and get that information out there and, uh, you know, was indicted. But you know, there used to be this time when you had this Comstock, and, you know, Anthony Comstock, who was like the morality czar back a hundred years ago. And if you talked about sex at all in the public, inform- you know, in, in public sphere, in any sort of educational capacity, yeah. it was horribly immoral and you were thrown in prison. Yeah. And it was like, good grief, how unrealistic, I mean, just what sort of denial of reality do you want to engage in here? You know, just to, if you, if this whole idea that if you just don't talk about the thing yeah. that makes you nervous and uncomfortable yeah. and makes it'll you blush, away. yeah, it'll cease yeah. to exist. Uh-uh. Yeah. You know? Uh-uh. <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> no, it's, I think it's just, item, guys. Yeah. The, the, um, the invisible friend. Uh-huh. Uh, people say, you know, you know the, the answer that they give that, the, well, we don't know. God has, works in mysterious ways and has mm-hmm. ultimate plans that we, who are we to question God? After all, he made us, we are nobody. You know, the Job yeah. argument in yeah, the chap- Bible, right? Chapter, Rom- uh, chapter one of Romans. <laughs> one, one, one eleven, I think it is. Yeah. That sort of thing. Anyway, but so these people come, you know, they, they say, well, you know, the the, the honest answer, like you said, is, is we don't know. But the, the answer that these people give is, well, look, we know that there is a God, okay? You know, this, the atheists probably don't know, but we do know. So it was God that created everything. Therefore, come to my church on Sunday and give me money. Because this God is in financial need. It needs lots of money. Uh, so, <laughs> that, yeah. what, 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 what does money have anything to do with the existence of a God? Yeah. Yeah, but and, these people insist on money. Yeah, that, yeah. that is my last comment. I'll leave it up to you. Yeah. All right. Well, and hey, then, uh, Juan, it's always, you it's, heard much. Yeah, it's always great to hear from you, man. All right. All right. Take care. Um, hmm. Yeah, going back to the sex thing I was talking about, I think it's... Uh, 
I want to say Sweden, I think. They have uh, sex education that starts in, like, you know, our version of elementary school. Good grief. And I think that they have, like, the lowest teen pregnancy rates of, you know, pretty much any country. Uh Um, And they're, uh, oh, was it? Oh, the age at which uh, kids first have sex is much later than anything that we can even comprehend, you know, of, of achieving here. And so, was it like usually after eighteen or something like that? Yeah, like yeah. seventeen, eighteen. And uh, so, so from youth, they know how their bodies work exactly, and they know what the uh, ramifications yeah. are if they do something that they're not. Sex ready for. isn't taught as something that's dirty, and you shouldn't do it, and shouldn't talk about it, and uh-huh. and you know, it, it's all this. It's it's stuff that you can't have until you're older, which yeah. of course then means. Well, you know, I think I'm old enough now. Yeah. So. Well, and if it becomes this authoritarian power trip, right? If if sex becomes the thing that the grown ups don't want you to do, exactly. Well, how do teenagers react to being told by a grown up, "Don't do this thing exactly. that's fun that we do"? Like, exactly. Ooh, mom and dad don't want me to do this. My pastor doesn't want me to do this. My teachers don't want me to do this. Mm. Guess that what must, I'm going to do? <laughs> that must mean it's really fun. <laughs> you know, I mean, understand the psychology, yeah. okay? We got a. Uh, well, we'll try to get at least one more, and maybe the other one. Uh, mm. Gilbert on line three has been waiting. Hey, how you doing? Hey, how's it going, Martin? Fine. Thanks for waiting. What's up? Hey, um, I called y'all last week, um, I'm, I'm, and I have a few comments on the ver- abortion. Oh, go ahead. Okay. okay. Um, I called you last week, and I told you that, you know, I grew up in a Pentecostal environment. My parents were Pentecostal. Oh, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Okay. I remember. I'm, yeah. I'm calling about abortion because um, well, the way we used to teach was, tell, you know, basically what you were saying, that no, don't have sex, don't do this, don't do that. Use contraceptives because God's against this and God's, you know, it's about reproducing and all that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we had, a, when I went to the seminar, I went, I, I felt to tell you that last week that I used to be a minister also. And I, I, I went to the seminar. When I went to the seminar, we did a study on the abortion clinic and the majority of the people that go to the abortion clinic are Christian. Why am I? <laughs> But yeah. yet they're the ones outside the streets protesting it. Mm-hmm. I mean, you don't that, that, you, like you. I mean, we've you've mentioned before, probably I've seen your website. You know, atheists is a small group compared to the Christian community in the United States. Mm-hmm. But yet, what keeps supporting these uh, these abortion clinics? Who's 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 going to get the abortion? Yeah, right. Well, remember, it's like we talked about early on the show. Remember the uh, the, the kids who partake in these. Uh, Christian student ministries where yeah. they, they vow to be celibate until marriage. Right. You know, and, and so, over, I think something like 62% of them, uh, ultimately, you know, ultimately just don't end up living up to those vows. Yeah. Well, you know, they find, they, they just can't resist at a certain, you know, it just nature takes over and they resist those vows and, and end up having sex, but because they didn't get the proper educational information that they yeah. could have to understand the consequences, they end up having unwanted pregnancies, STDs, because they are responding to their hormonal urges, but they exactly. didn't have the info. Yeah, exactly. So. Um, another comment was, um, you know, um, speaking of, you know, that that one caller that called earlier about him being a Christian, and you mm-hmm. know, because uh, the, uh, there there is Christians that don't don't push their 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 theory on anybody else. Sure. But the thing is, is that when you know it goes back to that when something does happen to an atheist, they're uh-huh. the first ones that are bringing it out. Uh-huh. And yet, you know, y'all have the courtesy not to do that, not to try to extend on, on somebody's uh, tragic death or something well, like yeah. that. Yeah. Well, now, I've 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 heard mean atheists make mean comments. Oh, definitely. And yeah. you know, we're not we're not you know, any morally superior yeah. as a body of people than anyone else, right? right, right. But what we want to do on this program, and I, and, you know, we, we want to set a good example. Not only is, you know, we want to present something that is contrary yeah. to the the very negative image of atheists that many Christians have. I mean, we, it's not productive to just slam people simply to be slamming people. Yeah. And it's not just not nice to, right. you know, exploit a death, you know, to go, hee hee, I told you so, or what have you. Right. Uh, um, but yeah, I mean, we, we, we would like to, you know, to encourage other atheists when things like this happen, you know, I right. mean... There's a time and a place to say I told you so, and the time you, after is usually right. maybe a few months after yeah. the thing happened. Last yeah. time, in, yeah. um, the, 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 the also that, that, you know, most Christians, and I'm talking about... We got, we got 20 from, seconds. From Catholic to Pentecostal to Baptist, they're always fighting amongst themselves on who's right, uh-huh. and yet they believe in the same God. Yeah. You yeah. know, that, that that's just... Well, they, controversial they need to work that out. Oh, yeah. Hey, listen, we appreciate your call, okay? Call us back All again right. sometime. Thanks Take care. Right, thank you. I am sorry that we are not going to get to the last caller that we had online. He had been holding for a while, uh, and, and we're sorry about that. But you know what? TV at atheist-community.org is a very convenient email address that you, sir, can use right now. Fire us a letter. 
and uh, ask us what you wanted to ask us on the line. And that's for anybody else watching the show, tv at org, our viewer email address for TV show feedback. And you can just visit the website itself to uh, find out if you are an atheist about upcoming events that we have, see what the group is like, if it's for you, what have you. Um, really enjoyed, uh, again, a great show. We love, uh, have, uh, we love you tuning in, calling up. We're here every Sunday, 4.30. Um, and that's about it, isn't it? Okay. Okay. Well, enjoy that Leonid Meteor Show, all right? Yes. And remember, Theus, we don't hate you. We just, we just think, think you're wrong. wrong. Take care. Bye. Have a good week. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. That's right. <laughs>